Hello, Tracy Jones here, and we're going to cover some of the basic components of the Clausen Colchester 15 inch lathe, which we use here in the machine shop. The machine you see in front of us is a Colchester lathe. It is a 15 inch machine, which means it has a 15 inch swing. The swing is measured in the maximum diameter that can be machined. Here we have the headstock. The headstock contains all the gearing for the spindle and all of the gearing for the feed components as well as the face with all the settings for those. Down in the tail, or the head plythe down here at the bottom, the bottom of the head base, is where the motor is at. There are basically two types of lathes. There are engine lathes and there are gearhead lathes. Gearhead lathes turn on instantly once the motor is started and turned off, the spindle will stop. A engine lathe, which is this component, has a clutch set up so that the motor will turn on and the motor will consistently run, but there's a clutch that controls the spindle. This is your speed guide. And for this unit, you match up. There are four sections. There's four colors. You can adjust to different ranges and then adjust the speeds inside those ranges once you have calculated your RPMs. You have your feed selections for your low and high range, your right and left threading direction, your ABC, the RST and the 1 through 8 quick change gearbox. These are what will set the feeds. The W, X, Y, and Z levers here. Y is used for feed, W is used for threading, and Y is set right here. This is your feed rates. You have inches per revolution. So, for example, if we wanted 10 thousandths per revolution feed, we would set it at LCR6. So we would have LCR and then 6 on our gearbox. This is the power button. This starts the motor. There's the stop button, stops the motor. This is your coolant pump. We're going to leave it off. This is your indicator light, tells you if the machine is on. Ones before turning on the power, we're going to do a couple other things to make sure everything is intact. Before we get to that, we're going to identify the rest of the parts. This is your spindle. This is driven out of the head of the machine. To that spindle, we attach a chuck. We can. This is a three-jaw scroll chuck or three-jaw universal chuck. All three jaws move in and out the same by using a chuck wrench. Your chuck wrench goes into the top of the chuck and you tighten it or loosen it. Do not leave the chuck wrench in the chuck. This is the biggest no-no you can perform on this machine. If your hand comes off of, this, of, the, spin, of the chuck, that chuck wrench needs to be in your hand. Do not leave it in there. You have the bedways of your machine. There's one on either side. To that bed is your carriage. This is your carriage right here. Your carriage moves up and down the bed. Your carriage contains your cross slide, your compound, and your tool post. The tool post is where your tool holder attaches, where your cutting tool sits. You have a hand wheel that moves the carriage up and down the bed. You have your cross slide hand wheel that moves the cross slide in and out, and you have your compound hand wheel that moves the compound in and out. At the end of the machine, we have the tailstock. Tailstock is used for many different things. The lathe tailstock slides up and down on the bedways 
towards and back from the headstock. This is the body of the tailstock. This is the barrel. This is the barrel hand wheel. The hand wheel brings the barrel in and out of the body. Inside the barrel is tapered with a number four Morse taper on this particular unit. And inside that tailstock you can put a live center or a chuck to hold a center drill, drill, whatever the case may be that will go in here that you can use on the end of the part, either to center drill, drill, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, the drive of the machine is controlled by the apron controls. It's controlled the movement of the carriage up and down the bed. You have a threading rod. This is the lead screw that allows the machine to thread. This is the driving rod right here. This is what sends the power directly to the carriage. And then you have the clutch guide rod. This rod runs the length of the machine and allows the clutch to be engaged or disengaged. Once the RPM have been calculated, which we will cover later, you would set your RPMs for whatever your particular use would be. Then you would set your feed rates. Now, if you're using the power feed, this is your power feed control right here. This is the power feed lever. This engages the power to the carriage to travel back and forth or for the cross slide. These two knobs right here are the apron control knobs. Okay. You have a knob that controls the function and a knob that controls the direction. The manipulation of these two knobs allow the carriage to move forward towards the headstock, reverse towards the tailstock, or when set for the cross slide, the cross slide to go forward or the cross slide to go back by the engagement of the power engagement lever right here. We will go over those next. This is your half nut engagement lever. This is what enables the machine to thread. This is your threading dial right here. These all work in sync with the lead screw to allow the thre machine to thread. This is one of your clutch engagement levers. This is what actually engages the clutch to allow the spindle to rotate. There is another one here on this edge. Now, the, not, the lever on the left of the machine will only engage in a forward rotation by simply lifting it upwards. This engagement lever, when lifted up, starts the clutch in a forward rotation. It will also function in a reverse move. You move the lever outwards towards the tailstock and down and it will cause a reverse rotation. This is your foot brake. At any time you step on this brake, it will disengage your clutch and stop the spindle from turning. If you have the spindle engaged and you step on the foot brake, it will stop the clutch. The motor will continue to run, but the spindle itself will stop. These are the basic components of the lathe. In a separate video, we will show you how to chuck a part, adjust the spindle speed, adjust the feed rate, make the necessary adjustments to make the machine function, and what to do prior to powering up the machine. This is just a basic coverage of the parts of the machine.